Welcome back, this is part 3 of Needle Felting a Mouse. So now that the body's done, it's time to start working on the head. So I'm just going to move the arms out the way so that it's a bit easier to work with. I'm going to take a strip of core wool and I'm going to start at the base of the neck. Wrap it around and over the head but I'm not going to go all the way to the nose, I'm just going to keep it here at the back of the head. Wrap it back around towards the neck and then pull that off. And I'm just going to felt this into place. Now that there's a bit more bulk to the back of the head, I'm going to start working on the eyes. Now you can use the plastic eyes if you wish, but I prefer to use wool. So I'm going to take some dark merino, just roll it into a little ball. And then I'm just going to tack it down on the mat just to get it to hold its shape. Now, as you can see, compared to the mouse's head, this does look quite big, but you'd want it to be quite big because the head is going to get bigger as we're felt in it. So it's always better to have a bit of extra to work with rather than not having enough. So I'm just going to felt that onto the head about halfway down. And I'm going to repeat this on the other side. Now that I have two big eyes, I'm going to start working on the next step, which is creating the bottom jaw. So to do this, I'm just going to take some merino wool and just kind of fluff it up a little bit so that all the fibres are going in different directions. It just gives a neater finish to it, I think. Then I'm just going to place this onto the mat and felt straight down the middle. Then I'm going to felt a little triangle. I'll just bring it up so you can see. I've marked out a little triangle. So now I'm going to fold over the edges and felt all those in two. Just keep folding and felting. This bottom section, I'm not going to fold that over. I'm going to keep that nice and loose so it helps to blend it in when we're felting it onto the mouse. And there we go doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to get shaped as it goes onto the mouse but as long as you have a rough triangle shape this creates the bottom jaw so I'm just going to move the arms down and then I'm going to place the triangle with a point at the nose and then the big wider section towards the neck so I'm going to felt that on and I'm going to fold it up around the back of the eyes and then felt that into place. And that's the bottom jaw all roughly felted on. So I'm now going to work on creating the snout. So again, using the same merino, I'm just going to fluff it up again.
place it onto the mat and felt down the middle. But instead of creating a triangle this time, I want to create a more rectangular shape. So I'm just going to felt down either side and again fold over the edges. And then the same with the top and the bottom. But don't over felt it, keep it all nice and loose so there's plenty of room for pulling and shaping. So I've made mine just a little bit too big, so that's an easy fix. All I'm going to do is pull off a little bit at the end. And then that's a better size. So I'm just going to place this on right down the centre of the nose and just tack that into place. Don't worry about covering up the eyes at the moment because that will get all pulled and shaped around the eyes. But first I'm going to work on the front. So I'm going to fold down the very end. If you can see I'm going to like fold it over and felt it into where the bottom jaw is. So either side the little corners on the end here, they're going to get pushed up and felted again into where the bottom jaw is. Not making it perfect at the moment, this is just tacking it all into place. So, where the eyes are covered up, you can felt around it, just kind of shape your way around and then felt it down towards the nose. Or, if you prefer, you can hold it and pull off the excess, but I think I'm just going to felt it down today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start shaping these two front pieces of the nose and to do that I'm going to take the needle and push it in alternating all the way around in a rounded motion to try and get a nice round end here. So as I'm going round I'm twisting the needle to go in the same direction as that I'm turning it. And I'm just going to keep doing this until it's all felted down nicely. So I'm now going to take a very tiny piece of the same pink we used for the tail and the paws and I'm going to roll that into a little ball and then felt that down. I'm only going to felt it very lightly because I'm not going to secure it in place just yet and then this just gives way for if I want to make any adjustments before I felt the nose on fully. So I'm just going to tack it into place just so we have a rough idea of where the nose is. So I'm going to work on building up the head and creating the shapes. So I'm going to be working on the cheeks, the eyelids and the back of the head. So first of all, I'm going to start with the cheeks. And to do this, I've got some brown merino wool. You can use whichever color you like, but I'm using brown and white. 
So I'm just going to take a small section and then roll it up. Then lightly felt it onto the mat. Just enough so that it holds its shape. And then I'm going to take one side of this and place it towards the nose and then tack that down. And then I'm going to bring it round underneath the eye and then felt it into the back of the head. So it's placed here. And then I'm going to felt that all down so it's nice and secure. And then I'm just going to keep felting until it's nice and in place. Don't worry too much about felting the eye area just yet, just mainly focus on felting the bottom and the sides because this is going to get shaped a little bit later on. So I'm just going to repeat this on the other side. Now that both cheeks are felted on, it's time to start working on the eyelids. So again, I'm going to take the brown merino, take a really small section and start folding it up. And then tack it down. And I'm slightly going to pull, just very gently, just to lengthen it a little bit more. And then this is going to get placed over the top of the eye, like so. And then just felt that down into place. Same as before, I'm focusing mainly on the edges and the sides, just getting that all tacked into place because I'll be working with this part soon. Then when you have something that looks similar to this, it's time to do the same on the other side. So I felt it down one side of the face just to give a rough view of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to show you how I did that on this side. I'm going to use a finer needle. This one's a 42 gauge and it just gives a nicer finish. So to start with, I'm going to start poking around the eye area, just lifting up the wall and starting to create some shape. Poking this one down. And then at the top here, where the two eyelids came together, I'm going to felt that across. And just keep felting it in. 
this part is just lots and lots of felting really to keep it all nice and snug and make sure it all stays in shape so just keep shaping the eyes as you want them and then felting down the wool so I've got a rough shape here and as you can see from this side all this excess wool has been pushed in in towards the head and the eye pops out a little more so to do that I'm going to use another needle this one's a bit thicker I think this one is this is a 40 gauge and I'm just going to poke down around the eye and push it in towards the centre of the head. And then that just brings all the wool in. So I'm going to keep doing that all the way around. I'm just going to zoom it in and get a different angle so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So again, same as before, I'm just going to keep felting the wool around the eyes. So on my mouse, I've decided that I want to extend the brown colour here and just a little bit more around the edges just so that there's a little bit less of the white showing and more brown. So I'm going to show you how I do that to get a nice smooth blend. I just take a small section of the brown merino wool, roll it up and felt it onto the mat. Then pick it up and then I gently pull off a very tiny piece from the edges and then it leaves with this nice fuzzy outline then I flip it over and felt that onto the mouse and the fuzzy edges give it a nice smooth blend so it blends nicely in with the other colours Then I'm just going to do the same for either side. So we've now got a nice smooth blend between the brown and the white. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to create a little bit of an extra eyelid just to give it a little bit more definition and just to make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to take the brown merino, just a very, very tiny amount, and just roll it up into a little tiny sausage. Then I'm going to place this over the top of the eye, and I'm going to felt, I'll just show you here, I'm going to felt it in around the eye and with the excess wool that's poking up here I'm just going to felt that in to the top of the eye and then felt it down and then it just gives that extra bit of definition to the eye so I'm going to take a bigger needle this one is a 38 gauge and I'm just going to really felt in along the edges of the piece I've just placed just again to really define it and make it stand out so now that both eyelids are finished I'm going to work on the nose as well as defining the mouth a little bit more so I want my nose to be just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to add a little bit more pink and just felt that straight over the, the top of the piece that's already there. I'll just zoom in so you can see a little better.
and just felting this into a little triangular shape. And then just keep felting and playing about with it until you're happy with how it looks. So I'm quite happy with this shape now, so I'm just going to take the bigger needle, this is the 38 gauge again, and I'm just going to poke in two nostrils. And there's a little pink nose. So now I'm going to start working on defining the mouth. And I just want to add a tiny bit of pink just underneath the nose and where the, the mouth starts. So in this little triangle section here. So a very, very tiny piece. And then I'm just going to felt that straight on. And now I'm going to take some brown. This is a darker brown than the one used before and I'm going to take a very, very thin strip of this. Just twist it up a little. And then I'm going to use this to line the mouth. Just felt in this very tiny strip all the way along the curves of where the mouth is going to be. So there we have a mouth all nice and finished. So I'm going to start working on the ears now and using the same brown that I've used for the head. I'm just going to take a little section, mess up the fibres. And then I'm going to gently tack this onto the mat. Now to get the shape of the ear, I'm going to use my thumb as a guide. And just felt all the way around until you've got a little sort of semicircle shape. And then fold over the edges and just felt them in. And then any excess at the bottom, I just pull that off. And then keep flipping and felting more. So now this is at a size that I'm happy with. So obviously the more you felt it, the more it's going to shrink. So I like my mice to have quite big ears. So I'm happy with this. And just to smoothen the edges, at this point you have to be very careful. I'm just going to felt in the sides with a fine needle. But instead of poking straight into the wall, I'm going to poke at a diagonal angle. Just take your time and go very gentle with this. So this is the ear, now that all the edges have been rounded off and it's nice and smooth, ready to add the pink part. So I'm just going to take some pink wool, just a very small piece, you don't need a lot, mess up the fibres, and felt this onto the mat. Then I'm going to flip it over and place it onto the brown part of the ear.
Then I'm going to tack it in place. One, two, three, four. Flip it over and then I'm going to felt it from the back. And you can pull off any edges. And now I'm going to take the finer needle and I'm going to felt in a diagonal angle just to neaten up the edges. So that is how you make the ear. And of course you want to make two of these ready to attach to the mouse. So I've got two ears now. So I'm just going to pop those to one side for the minute because we don't need them just yet. And I'm going to take the brown merino and I'm going to start fluffing up the fibers And then felting that in onto the mat. And then this just creates a nice flat piece to work with. So what I'm going to do with this is start wrapping the body. So I'm going to start with the arms. And I'm going to... Start wrapping the wool around, just tack it into place and if you think you have too much that's not a problem just pull off any excess but wrap it all the way around and then begin felting. I like to start with a bigger needle and this just helps to really bring it all in and keep it all in place. And then I go over that with the finer needle just to give it a nice smooth finish. But as you, you can probably see, I'm felting diagonally instead of straight through. And the reason I'm doing this is because the arms are so thin. If you're felting straight through, the core wool is going to show through the merino. So by felting diagonally, I'm preventing that from happening. I just keep felting and then wrapping and then with the body as well I'm just going to keep wrapping and felting more. So now it's time to start attaching the ears. There are lots of different ways you can do this, but the way I prefer is just to fold the ear in half and then just place it on the mouse and just adjust it until you're happy with how it looks and then just felt that on. I always felt at the top first, then the bottom, just to keep it in place. And then I'm going to felt all the way around and attach the next one.
So we've got two ears on the little mouse and I'm going to add a bit more fluff here. This part is optional, you can just leave it as it is if you want to. But I'm going to add some fluff and then add some white highlights to the eyes. So to make the fluff, just taking the same brown, I'm just going to rip off really small chunks. Just a very tiny chunk and then I'm going to felt down across the middle and then this middle part here I'm going to attach just behind the ear and around the bottom of the chin and then just felt that on felting straight down that centre line you've created And because the body is already nice and firmly felted, this should stick nice and securely to the body so it shouldn't really come apart if you give it a little pull. So just make sure that's nice and felted on. Then flip over the top half, just kind of brush it out with the needle and then felt over the top. I'm just adding a second layer just to fluff it out and really bulk it up a little bit more. And then the final layer is just going to cover this line here and just make it all nice and smooth ready for trimming down into shape. So for the final layer, I'm not going to felt down the middle, I'm just going to felt down one side. And then the side that isn't felted is going to run alongside the bits of fluff here. And the side that is felted is going to rest on the face and get felted straight in with the needle. And then that blends it all in nice and smooth. So I'm just going to repeat the same on the other side and then we're going to trim the fluff. So we've got two very fluffy cheeks and he's kind of looking like a lion at the moment. But it's just time to give them a little trim, give them a shape. And then you can do the same to the top as well if you want to. But that's entirely your choice. So I'm just going to give him a little trim now. So he's had his little haircut and I've added a little bit of fur to the top as well, just using the same method I use for the, for the cheeks. So I'm just going to add the whites to the eyes and then the little mouse is finished. Instead of just doing a tiny dot for the eyes, I prefer to do a little strip. Just a very tiny strip of white wool. Just keep felting that in and adjusting the shape until you're happy with the result. And that's how I add the highlights. So I'm just going to add the other one and then I will show you the finished mouse. So here is the finished mouse. Thank you so much for watching and I hope these tutorials helped you. 
I can't stop making these little guys. They're just so fun to make and just simply adorable. So if you do have a go at making one, please don't forget to share. I would absolutely love to see your creations. And again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys.